I have never met Pedro Gonzalez. I first interacted with him a few months ago. We had him on the show for the first time. Is that the only time he's been on? No, he's been on several times. Has he been on two yeah. times? He's been on twice then. Okay. Um, I've long admired his work. I found out about him. Well, long admired like over the last couple of years. Found out about him from his appearances with Tucker Carlson. That's how I found out who Pedro Gonzalez was. Just to protect you, I'm pretty sure he's been on more than twice. He Are hasn't you? been on a handful. I think he's been on three times. Okay. One of them was a bit more of a stretch back, but I, I, I do believe so. Just to protect you, because I'm the one who books him. I'm pretty sure I bu- booked him more okay. than two. But it's been two very recently. Okay. Um, I, I don't know a lot about what he was into prior to the the time that he was with um uh, with uh I, I saw him with tucker and american greatness and uh i didn't even read the breitbart article i didn't even read it here's why because even though i've had very limited direct interactions with pedro i think we have texted twice and spoken mostly via dm other than a few times he's been on the show that's it. I've never met him personally. Don't know him at all. He came to me over a week ago to give me a heads up that this kind of a story was coming out. He came to me over and in, in, in that conversation, he said that uh, some, they're going to they're going to come after him with things he said that he's ashamed of, that he's not happy with. He's a different person now. Um, and I think, frankly, if you just looked at the way the, the tone of the, te- and the te- I would hate the word tone, the temperament in which he has interacted on social media just the inter- the the, the um, his his conversation you know the, the stuff he posts about his son and things of that nature this is a different guy than you would have seen on social media if you go back to 2019 2018 etc uh, he brought this to my attention didn't have to do that gave me a heads up that this was coming did not have to do that I mean that we're not like you know personal friends i don't have like some top 10 show that wields like an annoyance and it's some form of like i'm you know i'm not i don't have a beck levin you know candace owens ben shapiro matt walsh dan bongino audience where i can almost comment as somebody if i wanted to i he did not have to do that this was just out of respect mutual respect uh came to me yesterday to tell me that the story was coming later that evening and you can tell when someone's when someone's turn is real by the way they behave in light of it and after the fact. And that's different from say a jailhouse confession. Okay, now this stuff is out in the open and I'm I'm sickened by it. You know, now that people have me. And it's it's very clear that Pedro Gonzalez believes he got involved in, in a faction of MAGA world that put him in a, a, into a dark place. And if anything, he's gone, so, he's gone so far the other way to break away from that, that at times, frankly, I find myself thinking, I, don't, I think that's probably an unfair criticism of Trump, actually. You know? But that is, I think, though, that is a demonstration of the sincerity of his concern about the world he was contemplating getting into and the things he was thinking of embracing. Here's the thing, though. Nobody in Trump world cared about any of Pedro Gonzalez's problematic views and words until he stopped slurping Donald Trump. And then they now they did suddenly care. That is a precedent that cannot be allowed to be established. That's how the left operates. That's how, that is a level of identity politic we can't have. That's a cult, folks. That's what that is. That's not any different than Jason Whitlock, Delano Squires, Thomas Sowell, Clarence Thomas. They're not black anymore because they're not Democrats. Dave Rubin, not gay anymore because he's not a Democrat. We sit here and mock and pan that stuff. We point out that identity cult, identity politic cult all the time. We cannot. And I have seen, I, I've, I've seen our good friend Matthew Peterson and others. Mm-hmm. Whoever is, whoever's in part, whoever's a part of this is, is professionally dead to me. Lots of people recognize 
that this is a precedent we cannot set. If you are uncomfortable, if you believe Pedro Gonzalez's past viewpoints are problematic and have no place on the right, then you should address them just for that reason. But, but these messages are from a while ago. That, that's not what this is about. This is about the fact that he's being very critical of Trump. We can't have that. And, and, and this, is, this is final proof of something I have said on the show a few times in the last few months. That you can always tell when Trump steps on a rake and or his acolytes have gone too far. Because what you'll see is you'll see a divide within MAGA world. You will see the nutter group, the, the cult group, the grift group. They will just pile on the rake, impale themselves upon it. They, 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 they love rakes. They can't get enough. These are the best rakes. We only, we only step on the best rakes. We only hire the best rakers, right? And they'll, they'll just continue on. And so that's whoever that clown was at Breitbart, that's who that is. And I have no idea what audience Breitbart has. They gave us a glowing coverage of nefarious i can't find i can't tell you it sold us one damn ticket so i i don't have a, i don't have a clue what their audience is i know they have a legendary comments section i can't t- i i can't tell you the last time anybody walked up to me in in an iowa caucus and said you know i was reading breitbart the other day and i i, I mean i don't know when that happened i'm sure it has happened at some point in my career it just hasn't been anytime very recently and it hasn't been very often um, but that cannot happen. I don't care if it's Trump. I don't care if it's DeSantis. I don't care if it's your mom. It cannot happen that the, the, the plumb line for fealty to our industry and movement is what you think about one particular person. That can't happen. That's an identity politic cult that is exactly what we're up against, and that's what they tried to install via Pedro Gonzalez. That has to not just be a no, but a you-know-what no. Nope. Nope. Not doing that. I am pleased to see the amount of my colleagues this morning. In fact, I wasn't even going to comment on this. I mean, I didn't think it was that big of a story. Pedro came and addressed it with me personally. I didn't really think it, most of my audience probably wouldn't even know or care. And last night I saw a lot of our colleagues around the industry jumping on this saying, going the full Gandalf. This will not pass. We're not doing this. Not setting this example. Don't. And you won't be surprised by this, but to help your argument, Steve, two of the people that raced to uh, condemn uh, Pedro were uh, David French and Jonah Goldberg. Correct. By the way, credit to Matt Gates for calling this out. See, there's then, then, because then you get to the other MAGA group. The other MAGA group, there are people that just are, that are, that are serious about, on some level, serious about their beliefs on some level, because I don't know all these people, I can't tell you what level, Mm -hmm. but serious about saving the country on some level. And you can always tell when Trump or, or, and because right now at Mar-a-Lago, Trump is surrounded by two kinds of people, Lindsey Graham and Laura, Laura Loomer. Those are the, and I have no idea how you put those two people in a room. Donald Trump has managed to do it. That's essentially his inner sanctum at Mar-a-Lago right now. Lindsey Graham and Laura Loomer. Neither one of those people is serious. Neither one of them. Neither one of them are serious. Neither one of them are sincere. And so there are a lot of very sincere people in MAGA world that for whatever reason, just like Donald Trump maybe more than I do, but are very serious as I am about trying to save this country. And you will see that when a moment like what happened last night with Pedro Gonzalez, they will either go quiet and silent. Like you saw a lot of them go silent after the Brett Baer interview last week. Just didn't even happen. Just pivoted right to something else with Biden. Okay. Or you will see them rebuke it. And you saw Matt Gates do that last night. Say, hey, I love Donald Trump. Don't agree with Pedro, but we're not doing this. This is not right. We're not setting this precedent. This is Donald Trump's last ride, although he seems to be running for president as if he was never president before and appears to be getting away with it. Um, He was. And win or lose this election, he doesn't have another win in him. This is his last ride. We cannot allow, no no matter how powerful his persona, 
No matter how significant his achievements, and there are significant achievements, we just commemorated the one-year anniversary of perhaps his most significant over the weekend, correct? Yes. But no matter what those things happen to be, we cannot allow such a damaging and corrupting precedent to be set on the basis of him that will long outlive him and absolutely turn us against each other at a molecular level and make us even far more ineffective than we already are. We are never going to beat an identity politic cult with an identity politic cult that cannot be permitted to be established. That precedent man has to be snuffed. Snuffed right away. Can't happen. Otherwise, we're not a movement. We're just a cult. We're just, we are the very grifters we are, except it's not just a few notorious people. That's basically what we are on a systemic level. That cannot happen. And I am very pleased. And that's the only reason I'm talking about it this morning. As I saw a lot of my colleagues step up last night when I was just going to say, I don't think it's a big deal. Move on. But a lot of my colleagues were like, no, this is a big deal and cannot happen. And you know what? They're right. It can't. And that's why I wanted to address it this morning. There has to be a better standard than will you pet my politician the way I will? Will you, will you love my monkey? Will you, will you polish the same idol? I will. If not, then we're done here. Let's get thee to an nunnery. Let's just go ahead, change formats. Let's go from biblical worldview to a straight up Christian ministry show. I'm okay with that if we have to, by the way. But then we're just done here culturally because there's no hope in that. The market's already cornered on identity politic cults. We're never going to be better at that than them. That's their brand. Gentlemen, your thoughts. Well, it's one thing to say it on Twitter, but I think the comparison of Donald Trump's Mayor Quimby routine right there on the one hand and Grandpa Simpson, uh, Joe Biden on the other and then you have the stark contrast of Ron DeSantis and the moment he had there, the two moments, just the clarity. I, I this is I, I I think this is just the beginning of what we're gonna see. And if it's coming from Breitbart, what is the legacy of Andrew Breitbart that continues to survive in meme form? Meme form is him staring in and saying war. You remember that, Steve, mm-hmm. right? Well, last night, Breitbart stared onto the keyboard screen and after the hit publish, screamed, Colt! Yeah. Uh, Scream that instead. That's the point I was just trying to make. 